Good afternoon, and welcome to the September 11th Oklahoma City Planning Commission meeting. First order of business is if you have phones, pagers, or other similar devices, if you would silence or turn those off now, we would appreciate that. And if you are not the applicant, excuse me, and if you've come to uh, address us on a case today, there are sign-up sheets like this. They're on the uh, table outside the chambers here. And if you would complete it with respect to the case you'd like to hear, be heard on, we'll be happy to hear you. And with that, we'll go to approval of the minutes for the August meeting. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Cast your votes. And those are approved. JJ, continuance requests. I have four uncontested continuance requests today. First one is item 38, PUD 1555, deferred to September 25th. Item 39, that's the wastewater uh, system fee, deferred to September 25th. Item 40, PUD 1558 to October 9th. And item 41, C6539 to November 13th. Did anyone come today to talk to us about any of the cases just read? Move the uncontested continuance. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the continuance request. Cast your votes. Those are approved. Mike? Thank you. Additional continuances? New continuance requests. All of these are requests to be deferred to September 25th. It's item 17, SPUD 775. Item 18, C6635. Item 22, C6641. Item 28, SP473. Item 34, C6657. And item 36, C6632. And again, is there anyone here today who came to talk to us about any of those cases? 17, 18, 22, 28, 34, or 36. Could you give us your name and address, please? C 6641, James Sherman, 8112 Southeast Linda Lane. I turned in my piece of paper. Okay. Uh, we were here last meeting, and again, last meeting, we were talked to about why we were here. I'm going to say this as quickly as I can so you all get on with the regular rest of your business. If the street we're talking about here is your street and you live on your street, is it in any way something important to you? If it's not, then we shouldn't be here. We should go somewhere else and do something else. If it is, then why has it been 14 years since I started trying to figure out what to do and get it done. Now, in the process of public works, listen in the internet what public works is for, maintains the city infrastructure, streets, bridges, drainage, traffic control facilities, the department reviews and issues construction related permits and works of engineers and constructions on all capital improvement projects and improvement city projects. The mission is to public works department is to provide infrastructure, uh, communication, maintenance, and private construction in view of inspections and uh, emergency first response services to the public so that they can live, work, and play in a safe and functional environment. That's in the book. I didn't write it. It's not being done. Why are we here? Thank you. Thank you. My name is Darrell Cross. I'm at 8001 South Landa Lane, right on the corner of 79th and Landa Lane. I'm sorry, which case are we talking about? C6641. Number two? Okay. 22. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, that street that they come down is too narrow to accommodate the trucks and stuff that come down that street because they have to you get down on the corner. They have to make wide turns. They've run over the culvert and crushed it. They have run across my lawn, the trucks. When they make the turn, they have to back up and make about three swipes to get around that corner and also over in the lane, uh, people's yard over across the street. So that's what I'm here for. I'm tired of seeing the trucks going up down there, tearing up the road. 
they bought one down this morning, had a doghouse on the back of it for a drill rig. And a week ago last Monday, they brought one down through there with a, a substructure on the back of it, which tore down telephone lines. So I'm saying the streets are just not big enough to accommodate that kind of traffic. Okay, thank you. Follow up on one more statement. To the microphone. The pictures I have taken since then have to amplify what I was here for last month. The number of 18 wheelers on that street, that one block street, blocking traffic, hindering the emergency repair equipment, all of the stuff that would save my life, all of those trucks blocking that street, that one block street, which is a residential street, which has housing of approximately 12 houses in that one block area, is being hindered from all of what you or me or we need when it's, when it's needed. If you're dying, if somebody else in your family is dying, and you need an ambulance, it can't get there. We will pass your concern on to Public Works. Thank you. And in fact, they're actually listening. If you need pictures. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Chairman, I'll move approval of the additional continuances. Second the motion. Uh, also, I'd like to make a comment on a couple of them. Okay. Uh, number 34 has the final plat brought forward to us. It has 16 technical evaluations, and the staff finds it does not conform with the preliminary plat. We have better engineers than that. Number 36 is another final plat that comes before us. Staff observes it does not conform with the subregs as to access, and it doesn't meet the requirements of the preliminary plat. The question I would ask, Mr. Chairman, I know why they're here. They were submitted, and staff had to look at them. I understand that. But these are substandard applications. You're wasting the staff's time. You're certainly wasting our time to review them to get here. Uh, our engineering community is better than that. And I would encourage staff, you see them coming like this, send them back if you can. Uh, I know there's statutory requirements, but this is, this is egregious. Well, when you consider that that's a final plat, that's my it's point. really it's not. Both final plats. Those are not completed applications for final plats. That's and I think point. that's the basis for staff to turn them back. And that's also a message to the uh, engineering community. We're looking for those subregs and preliminary plats to be followed. Um, on item 22, um, just reading the case history on this, we did uh, continue this from August 14th uh, to allow the applicant time to meet with the adjacent property owners. Dwight, would you mind speaking to that? Um, because if that has not been done, this is probably the last time and, and we're going to see this. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Elders, my name is Dwight Butler, uh, Anchor Engineering, on behalf of the applicant. My applicant, my applicant has not been in, in the state for, until the last week, and we have not time, time to properly address it, and we're weighing the options. We've already done road improvements on the northeast part of this plat, put a new RCB and everything. We're looking at possibly changing the configuration of the plat so that it only accesses from the north. I mean, there's several options that we're going through, and I have not had the time to do it with him being out of state. Okay, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing this on the 25th. Yes, you might tell your client that is that I, I will not be in favor of another continuance. Totally understood. Maybe, Dwight, there was some way that uh, with your applicant owner out of state that this should have been continued. I didn't know he was out of state until I tried to reach him after the meeting last time. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Okay, we do have a motion and a second to approve the additional continuances. Cast your votes. Are there any continuance requests from the public today? Okay, consent docket. JJ? 
Consent docket, items 1 through 8. It's item 1, ED 208. Item 2, CE 886. Item 3, PC 10387. Item 4, PC 10388. Item 5, CE 890. Item 6, CE 891. Item 7, CE 892. And item 8, C6654. Uh, C okay, commissioners? Anyone here today who came to talk to us about it, items 1 through 8 on our agenda? Move the consent docket. Just a minute. Uh, number 7. Give us your name and address, please. Uh, Andrew Willis. Uh, 1713 South Morgan Road. Okay. But the uh, item address is 9001 Southwest 38th. Okay, and you're. Yeah, I'm, I'm the applicant. I, oh, well, uh, this is on the consent docket, so. Oh, uh, I. It's uh, my first time here, though. No. That's okay. Yeah. With any luck, it'll sail through. Oh, okay. Right. So we do have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a motion and a second to approve the consent docket. Cast your votes. And the consent docket is approved. That includes items one through eight. First item of public hearing is item nine, C6643. That's the final plan of Timber Creek Estates, section four, located west of Mustang Road and south of Southwest 15th Street. Good afternoon, Mark Grubbs on behalf of the applicant, 1819 South Morgan Road. Um, final plat before you conforms to the pre preliminary plat. We agree to the TEs and ask for your approval. Um, Mark, I'll make a comment that isn't addressed solely to you, but it's addressed to the other um, professional practitioners as well. TE number four required that there be a letter submitted indicating where the recreational amenities will go. That should have been in at the latest last week. My note on my staff report was to defer the case. Now I find that you've brought that in meantime. It's in. I know. And, but the point is those things should all be done at the time you submit your final plat. And I say not just to you because there's another case or two today where the same issue arises. Hey, look at the bright side. I only have four T's, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You only got 25. And, and three of them are boilerplate. Yeah, only 25% as many as the other case. That's right. Okay. Uh, no one signed up, commissioners. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve item nine. Cast your votes. And it's approved. Thank you. Thank you. Item 10, SPUD 778, application by Oklahoma City Public Schools. To rezone 3200 North Walker Avenue. Nobody here? You know, it's maybe just, well, I'd really like to have this case continued because I don't know anything about it. Um, I have a lot of concerns and questions. The concept is very appealing, but. Um, the devil being in the details. Well, I do know that the uh, PTO and the administration of the school has been working on this for six months or a year to get it to this point. I'm sure I don't that's know why probably there's no true. one here. Yeah, I'm sure that's probably true. Well, I actually won't be here in two weeks. I'll be here in at least a month. That's all right. So moved. Thank you. Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second to move, excuse me, continue item 10 to our first meeting in October. Cast your votes. It is continued. Item 11, PC 10363, application by Sedona Lakes LLC to rezone 6701 South Rockwell Avenue from AA Agriculture to I-2 Moderate Industrial. Good afternoon. Kendall Dillon with Kraft & Tull representing the applicant. And this is a zoning case that's located at the uh, northwest corner of 74, southwest 74th and Rockwell. I think you all first saw this application back in April of this year. And uh, our original application was for R1 single family. However, your comprehensive plan designates this area for employment reserve or industrial reserve. So with that being said, you all decided that uh, that's the way that it should be developed. 
and uh, therefore denied our application. But since then, um, Council has given us the opportunity to come back to you with the ability to amend our application to re request industrial zoning, which is what we've done. And uh, obviously, um, staff recommends approval. It's consistent with your comprehensive plan, so we'd ask for your approval. No one signed up. Well, a motion and a second to approve item 11, cast your votes. And it's Thank approved. You. Item 12, PC 10391, application by RJK Properties to rezone 3990 Southwest 149th Street from I-2 Moderate Industrial to AA Agriculture. Good afternoon. I'm Bill Crager, the applicant. Uh, it's pretty simple. We, uh, that was a property I purchased uh, a few months back. It was zoned industrial for a sand pit. We're not going to use it for a sand operation. Everything around there is agriculture. We'd like to build a house and can't build it with it being zoned industrial, so we are requesting it be rezoned agricultural. And the uh, AE2 overlay is acceptable, and of course the navigation easements but that's being requested by the airport? Yes, sir. Okay. No one signed up, commissioners? Move approval. We have a motion and a second to approve item 12. Cast your votes. Thank you. Thank you. Item 13, SPUD 780, application by Storage, Oklahoma, LLC, to rezone 330 Southwest 104th Street. Good afternoon. Jason Spencer with Craft & Toll here on behalf of the applicant. This uh, SPD application is for a five-acre site located on the southwest side of Southwest 104th between Walker and Harvey, and we're seeking to allow personal storage here. The site's currently zoned in an SPD allowing office and residential. It sits between two existing churches on the east and west, um, and borders residential on the southeast and south. The developers met with the neighbors and has come up with a plan that, to our knowledge, has uh, basically addressed any of their concerns. Um, we've committed to brick for the office and for the walls facing the, uh, the borders of the property. There will be landscaping in accordance with Oklahoma City's requirements. We feel this application is a good fit for this site. We're in agreement with the TEs. Staff has recommended approval, and we would ask for your approval as well. No one signed up. Move approval. We have a motion and a second to approve item 13. Cast your votes. And it's approved. Thank you. Thank you. Item 14, SPUD 782, application by Lovelink Ministries, Trees on 1122 Linwood Boulevard. Uh, Marilyn Stark, Executive Director of Lovelink Ministries. The Building used to be the New Way Laundry and Dry Cleaners building. We purchased it to offer services to the community. It has multiple zonings right now. We want to zone it to where we can offer um, services to the working poor, unemployed, disabled, and senior citizens. You mentioned that, or the application mentions that existing signs will be retained. Uh, Except the one that got damaged by some truck. We're going to have to fix it or remove it. Well, but isn't there one on the roof, a big... It says Lovelink Ministries right now, yes. Okay, that stays. Yes. And then it, the other part of it says, if electronic message display signs are utilized, are you going to have EMD signs or not? At this point, no. If we, we have no plans for that at this point. We'd have to come back, I guess, for that. Okay, fine. If we put a T in there and say there will be no EMD signs unless you come back, just right now, just saying. That's electronic signs that like yeah. flash and, yeah, no, that's true. That's fine. Okay. And no one signed up. I had a question about this, just looking at it. Why is it, is the industrial zoning what they need yeah. for the uses that are listed here? I had that question too. For these uses. Why is the industrial used as a base? Uh -huh. uh, probably because it was just the most predominant in zoning right there in that at that intersection. It is. While I see a certain logic in that, I would really prefer for the zoning to be the least intense necessary for the uses that they are intending to make of the property. Um, it's such a hodgepodge of zoning now from R3, C4, and I2, so I mean, it's kind of either side of the line in terms of landing on I1, but I don't see any use there 
that that would require industrial zoning? It could be basically any base zoning that we have. If, if, uh, if an office, what's, what's, if what's an office currently zone? would be more. What's, what was New Way zone? It had four zones. I two. I two. Primarily I two all along in there. They're bringing it down by one. Uh, I, don't, I, I just I didn't know if there was a specific use that they had in their application that required this to be an I-1. North, south, east, and west of them bordering their property is all I-2. Well, I think, right. the, I, I think the industrial is, I don't have a problem with it. I just It was a question for me as much as a consideration. Right. But, but what does Love Link Ministries do? Right now we currently have a food pantry that serves about 350 families from around the city and each month and about 3,000 a year. And then we have um, um, a thrift store, and we have housing for four men who live there to get off drugs and alcohol. And then what we want to do is in the warehouse part, start life skill classes, on-site job training, which would include um, maybe, and I think this is where kind of some of the industrial came in, was mechanics or welding or things that maybe we can take people who come into our food pantry from no skills to some skills where they can have a job or have their own business. And then we would also do an after-school program. We're also thinking about a medical dental clinic in an area that would be um, limited in what its scope was, but something for the community. And where do you currently operate? There. Where do you? There? Yes. You're in New Way now? Yes. So you just want to expand right. what you have? Right. And we, told, we were told that we couldn't really do all the other things we wanted to do because it was zoned industrial only. I mean, well, it was in, well, that's not really true. It was industrial and commercial and residential kind of in sections throughout the building. And so it was suggested that we do the SPUD so we could cover whatever we wanted to do in the future. Okay. No one's signed up. Turn on the approval. Oh, what the addition of deleting the, deleting the MD sign. Second the motion. We have a motion and a second to approve item 14, deleting the EMD sign. Cast your votes. And you're approved. Thank you. Okay, thank, you. thank you. Item 15, SPUD 783, application by Rebecca Ebbs to rezone 1031 Oakdale Drive from the R4 district to a new SPUD. Hello, I'm Rebecca Ebbs, and um, we just want to rezone this from R4 to whatever it needs to be so that we can build an office building for our business. Buck, use your microphone. Move for approval. And we have a second. Approve item 15. Cast your votes. And it's approved. Thank you. Thank you. Item 16, SPUD 784, application by Drake Stone Partners to rezone 8320 North May Avenue. Uh, good afternoon. Tim Johnson with Johnson Associates, uh, representing the applicant. This is a little piece of leftover uh, multifamily tract, uh, leftover behind the convalescent home that was constructed a few years back. And this will be a, a single user office building with uh, shared access that was constructed as part of the convalescent home. Uh, there's only one TE, and we agree with it. We'd appreciate your approval. No one signed up, commissioners? Pardon me? Is there anybody else who wants to be heard on this item? No, no one signed up. I'll move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve item 16. Cast your votes, and it's approved. <clears throat> Items 17 and 18 were continued to 925. Item 19, request of Kraft and Toll for an approval of a revised master development plan pursuant to the approval of PUD 1350. Again, Kendall Dillon with Kraft and Toll representing the applicant. And uh, this is a uh, PUD that's located at the southeast corner of Southwest 29th and Mustang Road. I think you all approved the planned unit development back in 2008, and, and this item is basically a companion item with item number 20, which is a preliminary plat, because at this point we're trying to develop the residential. But in that PUD, there is a clause that says that if the uh, master development plan is changed at all, that it has to come back before you for approval. 
Um, so that's the reason and purpose of this application. It's, it's basically the same exact master development plan. The track one, which is the commercial, is identical. The only thing that's different is track two, which is the office track. Originally was more of a triangular shape that kind of triangled and got wider as it went up to 20 knot. That now has, is kind of conformed to an L-shaped pattern. And then obviously the residential conforms to it. So that's basically the changes. Um, nothing significant, the exact same um, acreage on the tracks. And so with that, we'd ask for your approval. Again, no one signed up. I'll move for approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve item 19. Cast your votes. And it's approved. Thank you. Item 20, C6638, preliminary plat of Brookstone Ridge. Located south of 29th Street and east of Mustang Road. Again, for the record, Kendall Dillon with Craft and Tall. And uh, obviously, this is the same track of property. The preliminary plat conforms uh, with the PUD. Um, got a density of about 3.4 dwelling units per acre. I think the PUD permits up to four and a half. Um, PUD specifically mentioned that there would be 13 acres of common area, which we meet, which is considerably um, more than what your standard subdivision regulations require. Um, in regards to the TEs, we're in agreement with all of the TEs. I would like to mention on TE number two, um, it requires a southbound left turn lane on Mustang Road. We are in agreement with that. However, I would like to just let it be known that we're in agreement with that with ODOT's permission. Um, Mustang Road is a state highway, so obviously anything we do to it has to go through that process. And so and just in case they uh, decide that they do not want us to put a left turn lane, I would like to be eligible to come back with our plat. But Outside of that, we're agreeing with all TEs. No one signed up. Can, can we have that caveat in, in a TE? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nobody signed up. All right, I'll uh, move for approval of, uh, I guess we've got to add that to the TE, or do we need to add that to the TE? Language about ODOT approval to TE number two. Okay. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve item. 20 as conditioned, cast your votes. That's approved. Thank you. Item 21, PUD 1550, application by Oklahoma City Urban Renewal Authority and New Page LLC to rezone 600 North High Avenue. Good afternoon. Again, Tim Johnson uh, and Michael Owens on behalf of the Oklahoma City Urban Renewal Authority, otherwise known as the Alliance. And also we're representing today the uh, New Page LLC, which is actually the owner of the school building itself on the site. And uh, <coughs> with us today is Jason uh, Bradshaw and Don Smitherman, Gina Safola, and Marjorie Young, all part of the design team for the school. Uh, what I'd like to do is kind of walk you through our process, what we've been through, and then I'd like uh, Michael to address. Uh, he's had a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations with the neighbors. Um, as you're aware, this is located near 4th and Stonewall. It's a accumulation of properties that have been acquired over the years uh, uh, by Urban Renewal. Uh, and then the school itself was sold by the school district to New Page LLC uh, within the last year, 18 months. And that's in Tract 1. So the school building proper is on Tract 1. We've combined this application with the Alliance, and they own the tracks, the rest of the tracks that are shown on here. The way the PUD has been structured, it's to allow basically for multifamily use. Uh, it's a very urban setting, walkable, uh, connected, uh, tight site. It's very, it's designed to be very uh, close in proximity to uh, the parking areas, the, uh, the potential retail that's proposed along 4th Street. Um, and the anticipation there would be that that would be something, a local retailer, not, nothing big, uh, maybe a local deli or something like that is what's anticipated there for the patrons and the uh, 
uh, people that live in this area, as well as uh, other, the other businesses that are up uh, near the hospital north on Stonewall. Um, this application does not address any street closures or openings of streets that are currently closed. Uh, we're really simply dealing with the land use on this application. I know there's been some concern about potential traffic impact uh, if Stonewall were to open, for example. And right now that's not before us. Uh, that was just a concept that was in one of the early, early concept plans. We did do a traffic analysis on this site and uh, looked at it very thoroughly. And with the additional units that, that could be built here, there's not an adverse traffic impact to any of the areas around this site. Um, we do have height restrictions, obviously building off of the school building itself. It is on uh, really a pinnacle in the city. I don't know if anybody's been up there, but it is, the views up there are just amazing. This is the existing structure. They're, they're going to retain the historic nature of this building uh, along with the, the history that goes with the building. The African American community in this area has a long standing history. There are very many, uh, there are a lot of groups that are connected and tied to this and uh, with Michael's help have been in, interjected and involved in many of the discussions. Uh, it's anticipated by the developers, New, L, uh, New Page LLC, that they are going to prepare as part of their plan to allow for uh, the community to use some of the building itself. And that would include the, the old theater in there and there's some open spaces and they really want to bring in uh, some cultural uses to the building and, and have uh, worked very hard to address that. Um, as you're probably aware of the process that Urban Renewal goes through, they're in the selection process to find a developer that, that will develop the remaining tracks. Obviously, New, New Page LLC is one of those that have submitted. That selection process has not been made yet. So we have drafted the PUD to ensure that whoever the developer is that gets selected will have the continuity between the tracks, uh, building types, building materials, height restrictions, and such. So that generally describes how the PUD's written. Um, uh, I'd like Michael to maybe talk about uh, some of the meetings that uh, he's done. I will uh, mention, er, we started this early on, back in May. We had, uh, we sent out invitations, non-public notice, but just invitations to the neighbors to try to have a gathering. We had about 50 people uh, show up at the uh, 5th Street uh, church. Uh, it was a good meeting. We informed people. We took a lot of information out of that meeting and, ha and worked it into the PUD. And then on July 15th at the, at the 6th Street uh, Christian Church, we had another meeting where we sent out actually 700 plus invitations to the surrounding areas, uh, neighborhood groups, really going out maybe three quarters of a mile in some areas. And with that, we, uh, we had another meeting of about 60 or 70 people. And for the most part, the discussion was very positive. Uh, you know, there was some question, there's a little bit of angst about access to Stonewall. Uh, and we talked to the young couple that live right there. Um, so we incorporated as much of that information as we could into the final PUD. And uh, I, I did see the letter that was submitted. And most of those items in that letter do not necessarily address the zoning pro of the property. It's, it's really how these developers will work with uh, the community as the project goes forward and they have taken note of that and have already started some of that in the process and with that I'll let Michael address. Well as Tim has mentioned we have had uh, multiple meetings uh, Councilman Pettis and myself of course he's mentioned 5th Street, 6th Street we've also met with Douglas Alumni Association as well to get them in the process uh, I think we're committed uh, from the Urban Renewal as well as the Alliance uh, for Economic Development. We're committed to having community engagement in all of these uh, particular uh, developments that happen in the Northeast community. With the TIF being created there and the other developments that are on the uprise, it's essential from our viewpoint to reach out to the community. Uh, we've held, um, we have a stakeholder committee. Um, Mr. Benton is here, he's one of our stakeholders as well, and they're part of the process. So there, there's a holistic and comprehensive way of trying to get the community involved, and, and we've heard their concerns. And as we move forward, of course, 
uh, we will be working with them to be more specific about uh, what they desire to see uh, with these particular developments in their community. Thank you. Um, other than what we've told you, the technical evaluations is a little bit of minor language change, and we agree with that. We'll make that change prior to council. We're open to any questions that you might have. We do have someone signed up, commissioners. We might want to hear from Greg Jones, and then we'll okay. take it from there. Mr. Jones, if you give us your name and address for the record, please. Sure. Greg Jones. I live at 612 North Kate Avenue. I'm a resident of the neighborhood and also a part of the JFK Neighborhood Association. Uh, I'm here to represent the JFK Neighborhood Association, our president, president Denavetta Davis, and the board of directors to share our thoughts about PUD 1550, the rezoning proposal for Page Woodson School and the adjacent vacant properties. The association was established in 1975. We will celebrate our 40th anniversary next year. The Neighborhood Association was formed in 1987. Our boundaries are from MLK to Lincoln, Northeast 1st to A Street. There are about 500 rooftops in our neighborhood. While there are remnants of the old, which include the Page Woodson School, and feelings of mistrust because of past experiences of property being seized using eminent domain, residences being, residents being displaced, and recent rezoning proposals affecting the community from the city and from the OU Health Science Center. There has also been a resurgence of the neighborhood with over 250 new homes, townhomes, and apartments, and has become a more diverse neighborhood. The Page Woodson School Project is the second school in our neighborhood where rezoning has been proposed, the first being Dunbar Elementary School. The property was uh, approved for rezoning earlier this year. While we have concerns beyond the rezoning proposal before you today, such as possible environmental issues that may occur due to the removal of asbestos, increased traffic and noise due to the proposed multi-purpose housing, the possibility of neighbors being displaced and property seized, we also understand this is the first step. We want the Page Woodson building to be preserved and brought back to its historic grandeur and ask you to approve PUD 1550. Failure to approve this proposal would mean the building would further deteriorate, be more of a target for arson and vandalism, be a haven for vagrants, and a public nuisance. We may never have this opportunity again. We must seize the moment. In JFK, we believe together we achieve more. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to address us on this case? Gosh, Tim, I don't have any questions. No, I'm kidding. Commissioner, um, discussion, Lee? Yes. Yes, I um, have a, a couple of uh, questions. Um, even though this is not, I know traffic is really an issue and a concern that, that we have received communication on, and we're not really addressing that today. But um, one of the concerns that really weighs, seems to weigh heavily from this community is some assurance that, and I've spoken with the developers, uh, Jason and Don and others, um, that some um, preservation of African American history will happen and will be dedicated in the Page Woodson building, including, but you did not mention, meeting areas and meeting spaces for uh, neighborhoods and uh, other associations uh, who would like to use the facility, if that's going to be made available, is that correct? That's clearly in their plan. And Jason, you want to respond to that? Okay. Jason, give us your name for the record, please. Jason Bradshaw, New Page LLC. Uh, it, is, it is in our plan to not only uh, rehabilitate the auditorium itself, but the sublevel below it um, will be made available for meetings, rehearsal space, um, any 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 type of of, um, of of support to for the function of the neighborhood and of the use of the auditorium. Okay. Um, Urban renewal has not yet granted um, uh, or rewarded, uh, I guess, the uh, rest of the development. Uh, just the school is on 
Uh, is that correct at this point? Yes, we are at, at present time reviewing uh, two uh, presentations uh, for uh, the remaining uh, partials around there, and uh, we're getting down to, um, to our decision here. Uh, both are going to present coming up uh, pretty soon, so, but uh, we have not uh, made a final decision on that. Um, the investment has already been made to Paige Woodson. Yes, sir. And they are also, the, the same corporation is also um, a part of the bidding process. They're one of the, the developers. Yes, sir. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Wouldn't that make sense? Uh, never mind. I'm sorry. Thank I'm you. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, but it's not our job. <laughs> Anyone else? If, if there are no uh, other comments, I move for adoption. Uh, yeah, Janice, I I'm just sorry. would like to say I'm, I'm very, very pleased to see this happening. Um, that school is, is such a, you know, beautiful uh, anchor to that area. And as we went through the whole thing with the, the Health Sciences Center and, and the concerns and questions, and, um, you know, I, I had felt that there was not this effort being made to reach out in the way that I wanted to see that done but also not um, enough uh, emphasis being put on the redevelopment of the surrounding area in a way that invited the community in, um, rather than, you know, sort of set the Health Sciences Center apart from its surroundings. Um, so I'm very, very pleased to see this first step. Make us proud. <laughs> Do it right. I intend to. I'm excited about this development as well, uh, and they really have reached out, I know, and had several community meetings, uh, as they have already mentioned, and uh, even have gone back in, uh, in this process, and there are people who are not happy about it, but it is a necessary development for the area. Uh, we still have the Jewel Theater and other things that are considerations in that area, but this is a, an excellent piece for us. So. I move for adoption. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Jen. I'm Wait, sorry, Diane. We have someone else to speak. Yes, Diane, Diane McDaniel. The address is 617 North Everest Avenue. It's right adjacent uh, to Paige Woodson. I think what they're doing with Paige Woodson, the revitalization, is an excellent job. I am extremely happy, but none of the neighbors who live in that quadrant have been are on the board to help make plans. I wasn't going to say anything, but I just couldn't sit there and not let you all know that none of us, the 70 or so that are within that perimeter, sit with the planning. And so we would like to be included rather than excluded. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Uh, who, who all are on the board uh, if no one in the surrounding area is on the board? Well, I, I think it's important uh, first to state that it is within the, the JFK um, Association. So we've met with them. Uh, we've even met with um, the immediate, um, uh, I guess, homeowners around Page Wilson. We've met with them on, on I believe, several occasions. Uh, it's all about inclusiveness, uh, but I think the, as far as you're looking at two different things, you're looking at the development team, and then you're looking at the community side of the house. And the community side of the house, we want to work with the JFK leadership, uh, to, to make it all inclusive. So that's, that's going to come. And I can, I can promise that uh, those uh, that are close to Paige Wilson that live around there will uh, be included in the process. Every step of the way we've, we've, we've met, matter of fact, we've met more with uh, those that live right around the facility than we, than we have with those uh, farther down uh, JFK. So uh, we recognize, and I think the development team recognizes that they are an important piece because they live 
uh, right across from it. So it's about inclusion. Uh, and this is a long process. So throughout the, the process, uh, I think they will feel more comfortable uh, with being in, included in it. So uh, there is no, uh, from the urban renewal, there, we have not established no team. Okay. The developer has established a team of folk that have a history with trying to work with Paige Woodson. And I think uh, people in the community respect them. So uh, they have been inclusive as far as that piece you're talking about and reaching out as well. So uh, uh, that's something that still has to be worked out as we, as we move forward. We realize that the people that are on the board now, we respect them. We've known them for eons. And uh, even Mr. Bradshaw allowed us to go through the building. And he explained to the immediate uh, residents in that area what was going to happen. It's just that as of today, even though they have talked to us and have come to us, no one from the immediate area has been placed even with the team. And that's all we want to see. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We right. have a motion and a second yes. to approve the case, which is item 21. Cast your votes. And it's Thank approved. you very much. Thank you. Item 22 was deferred. Item 23, PUD 1545. Application by Interstates Oil and Gas to rezone 14,001 North Council Road. Too many pieces. Sorry, Tim Johnson again. Uh, on behalf of the applicant, this is a uh, PUD that was submitted back in late May, I believe. Uh, it's been continued several times due to uh, questions and comments relative to the traffic conditions on Council Road. Uh, the traffic study was done for this back on and submitted on July 1st. Uh, there were questions relative to um, the last questions came up relative to accessibility to the site and then site distance to the site and the, def the deferral or denial in the staff report, I believe, came uh, upon the traffic uh, staff looking at the conceptual location of an access point that was part of the original conceptual plan. After we received that information, we actually went out and looked again and very simply put, we can move that uh, entrance north about 50 or 100 feet, and it becomes achievable with the existing speed limit the way it is. So uh, with that caveat, and we'll include in our, our PUD, once the development occurs, it'll, that the driveway will be required to be placed uh, within the visual safety zone for 55 mile an hour speed so that we don't have to go to traffic commission and reduce the speed. Uh, the uses on this is an office and some multifamily. We do abut uh, R1 to the west, and they do have a street stub. Um, we are recommending in, on TE number two, it asks about connecting that stub. Because of the type of this uh, zoning proposed here and the zoning that exists to our south and the oil well that exists to our southwest, uh, we believe that the best thing we should do is uh, put a provision in the PUD to allow for a gated uh, access way that will allow them access to council for emergency access um, because our uses are not like kind to single family detached. Um, we don't think that the neighborhood would probably appreciate us connecting there. So we'd ask for that variation to the technical evaluations. Other than that, we agree with the rest. And you're limiting to one point one of access, access point. on council now? Yes. Tim, tell us how much multifamily are you going to have and what's it going to be? Uh, the density cap is uh, 18 units per acre on... Which is 180 units. I got that part. Okay. 
What's, what's it going to be? What's it going to look like? It'll be, uh, be, it it'll be behind an office development in the front, and it'll be more of a, what you would be called recently garden-style apartments, but it's a very limited location and tucked away, not from But you've street. tucked in congregate care and other things. But this is not to be a congregate care facility. No, the, the, the intent there was the possibility that I understand. They could develop it that way. But we have a, an abundance of R4 zoning out there already. We have an abundance of built-out R4 out there already. This is excessive. Not only is it excessive, you want 20-foot signs and EMD signs. What's your, what are you guys thinking? This is not... Well, I think the, the reason we included that is we have straight C3 across uh, to our east uh, in the old, uh, it was originally a CUP. Uh, so the whole corner south and east of us, north of our property line, is all heavy commercial and, and would permit tall pole signs. Which has been zoned heavy commercial forever, mm -hmm. okay? It's not something we zoned heavy commercial no, no, today. I understand. It's, it's exactly the thing we're trying to get away from. And I've asked staff some time ago to give us a detailed inventory of the R4 that's available, existing zoning now. Uh, first brush came through with more than I thought, but that's just what was straight R4. There's a much more embedded in PUDs that they haven't completed yet. Uh, I can't support the 180 apartment there. I'm, I'm sorry, and, and certainly I, the commercialization you're talking about is, is excessive for the area. When you use the term commercialization, you're talking about the multifamily part? Well, uh, no, I can't support that because it's multifamily. But EMD signs, where's the closest EMD sign out there right now? I haven't built it yet. It's going to be south of us. Uh, well, perhaps I'll request a continuance then for two weeks. Pardon? Okay. I'll, I'll request a continuance two weeks and work with you on that, your concerns. Because of the deferral of this, we haven't really had a chance to vet out any other concerns. Two weeks enough? Yes. Move deferral two weeks. Okay, we have a motion and a second to continue item 23 until September 25th. Thanks. Cast your votes. And it's continued. Item 24, C6640, preliminary plan of Northwood Village, located north of Northwest Expressway and east of Northwood Drive. Kendall Dillon with Craft & Toll representing the applicant. And uh, this obviously is application for a preliminary plat um, located on the uh, northeast corner of Northwest Expressway and Cemetery Road. Um, we have 488 lots on the 150 acres, yields a density of about 3.25 dwelling units per acre. Um, our original plan that we had originally submitted had 499 lots, but in attempts to be proactive, our, uh, my client met with some of the adjacent property owners and uh, just explained his plan and to listen to any of their concerns and some of the results of those. We've got three different product sizes or groups in this development, so we kind of shuffled those around, moved some of the bigger lots or the bigger product over to the west and resulted in about 11 lots that we lost. So, but uh, again, he's met with them on four different occasions. In regards to the TEs, we are in agreement with all of the TEs. I think there's 10, 10 TEs, most of them are just standards. However, on TE number four, um, we are requesting a variance. And if you notice on your map, you will see that in the very middle of the site, there are two streets that basically run north and south. Um, one is Altador and one is Beckerman. Those two blocks are adjacent to drainage ways that are actually intermittent streams as mapped by the USGS maps. So there are some difficulties in regards to trying to cross those with permitting, um, some different constraints there. So we, in the design, would, was trying to obviously not make any more crossings and, and disturb that area more than we had to. So we've got two block links that are in excess of your subdivision regulations. I can tell you that I think on Alter Door that we can uh, meet the code on that one in regards to the block link. However, on Beckerman, we're really struggling, struggling to figure out how to meet your code on that one. So that's the purpose, which we had asked for a variance on that. Um, outside of that, on TE number five, 
is another variance request. However, we designed that cul-de-sac to be basically right at 700 feet, which is your code. So we do not need that variance, um, so we can strike that one. So with that, we're in agreement with all the TEs and would ask for the variance for that one block length. We'll limit it to the Beckerman as shown on the preliminary plat and would ask for your approval. And again, Kendall, the, the need for the variance on Beckerman is is what? Well, if, if you Besides look at... losing a couple of lots. Well, if you look at all of the other engineering design criteria that we have to adhere to, for instance, we've got to get drainage from one place to another. We've got these issues. But not only that, but when something is mapped by the USGS as an intermittent stream, then there are certain permits that we have to acquire in order to be able to disturb those. There, we can get nationwide permits up to basically 300 feet sometimes a variance, but you start to get in excess of that, you talk, start talking about different kinds of permits that become very problematic. But in conjunction with that as well, even when you look at basically what we're trying to accomplish with block length, but also taking into light what additional infrastructure you would inquire, not only for the upfront cost, but for maintenance long term. And we just feel like that specifically on Beckerman that it makes sense on this one to request the variance. And so that's the purpose of our request. This brings to mind an addition my neighborhood uh, called Hidden Creek. It was difficult to develop. Several developers couldn't seem to deal with the creek that was there. One day, engineer, I believe it was Mr. Johnson sitting here, said, yes, you really could do that. It's called a bridge. <laughs> and, and, it, and it worked out very well. It turned out to a very nice. What you're saying is, it's an engineering difficulty and, and costly to do. It, it, correct. I mean, it's, there's just some, I'm not sitting here saying that there's no way that you could ever, but when you look at what it really takes to do that, especially with the Corps of Engineers, I'm just, to me, that's the nature of the purpose of a variance and that's our request. Thank you. So what else, what else could you do along that street to break On Beckerman? Up? Yeah. I'm not, you know, we've asked, we've had some other developers put in roundabouts and, you know, circles and that kind of thing. Well, I, you know, I don't know exactly. Um, that's the reason that we've designed it that way. I mean, I, obviously, you know, we could attempt to cross it, which gets another intersection, but we're back into these discussions that I'm talking about. Um, you know, I personally, if you look at just a roundabout just in the middle of the street, I'm not sure what that necessarily accomplishes on this particular street in light of, maybe the intent of the block length, I'm not sure. But, you know, in light of that, you create, in what my opinion would be, somewhat of a traffic issue as well um, with what sometimes is associated with those. So, you know, I'm, again, right now, I don't really have an answer for that. That's the reason we're requesting the variance. How long is Becker? It's, it's 1,800 feet. So it's about 300 feet over 300 feet the over. block length. Well, I don't have anything else. Any other questions? Has anybody signed up? No one signed up. We do have the block lengths for a reason, which has to do with just trying to get better residential community design. That's the point. It's awfully hard when you're looking at something with this many projected lots to feel a whole lot of, um, <laughs> I don't want to say sympathy, but I guess that's what I mean, for the argument that it's, you know, can't be done. I mean, it's like just take out a couple of lots and put a street through there. I mean, it, it seems to me like it wouldn't be that difficult to break up the block line. Well, that, that is, I mean, if you look at Beckerman, though, that's the problem. If you look in the north and the west, it just connecting a street up there becomes problematic because obviously we're bordered by property to the north that we do not own. And then on the west side, obviously, is the stream. So it's not, that, that becomes the difficulty. Well, but you have a, I'm sorry, I'm not an engineer. Uh, but I mean, you have this cul-de-sac at 141st Court and right at the elbow of Beckerman, if you took out a couple of those pie-shaped lots there, and made that um, cul-de-sac into a straight-through street from 
whatever that street is, from Altador to Beckerman, I mean, what are you really losing? Well, one, a couple of lots. Well, I guess what I'm trying to explain is 143rd Court that you're talking about. In order to break up that side of Beckerman, it would have to cross Common Area A, which is the stream that I'm explaining. And that happens to be the what right there is basically the lowest point or the widest part of the stream. You can't go south and east to break up Beckerman. You'd have to go north and west back that way. Oh, I see. What Otherwise, you're connecting it to Altador, right? Which doesn't solve your problem. Right. Yeah. Doesn't it solve your problem because why? Well, it just seems to me then you're connecting two long blocks to each other. I mean, you break it up, but you're really just connecting two long blocks to each other. Exactly. I don't think that helps us any. You're just connecting two that are already too long. Two, uh, exactly. Right. Mr. Chairman, I'd move the variance. We have a motion and a second to approve the variance to TE4. Cast your votes. And the variance is approved. Nick, I'm waiting. Well, I'll move the uh, motion to leading TE5. I'll move the application to leading TE5. I'll second that and commend your uh, developer for using Major League Soccer players' names. Okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second to delete TE5. Cast your votes. That's approved. Thank you. Do we need a motion to approve the item? That was it? Well, yeah. Oh, I, I didn't get all of that then. Sorry. Item 25, PC 10379, application by LWTMF LLC to rezone 16301 South Pennsylvania Avenue. From AA, and R, from AA to the R1 and C3 district. Tim Johnson with Johnson Associates on behalf of the applicant. And the applicant's here today, Mr. P.B. Odom III, uh, to discuss this case. Uh, this is a uh, 160 acres, of which only about 120 or 30 of it is usable due to the uh, severe stream that cuts across the northwest corner. It's also adjacent to the uh, South Canadian treatment facility, wastewater treatment facility, uh, but it's in a growing part of our city, and this is uh, what we believe is a good location to meet the old standard of and model of the uh, the uh, planning and zoning code to allow for straight R1 zoning and commercial on the corner. Um, there are, uh, there's been comments and questions with regard to traffic studies and uh, the C3 use, and Mr. Odom would like to address those. Mr. Chairman and members of the commission, my name is P.B. Odom III, but just call me Paul, and I am uh, I'm delighted to be here and excited about sharing uh, a few pictures with you. Now, Lance is going to put those up in just a moment. Oh, not too far, too quick, Lance, but, but we'll, we'll wait for the next one. So I've got it. Talking about traffic. That doesn't look too much like traffic there. Are you seeing this on your screens? Yeah. You guys yeah, in front of you? Like oh, okay. Dan, it's good to see you. <laughs> You're not Susan, I know. He just uh, But um, we're talking traffic, the issue about traffic. Well, traffic is you know, a couple of things. It's, you know, we look at infrastructure. We also look at safety. Now, We'll show a few pictures a little later, but not yet, Lance, uh, about, about the site. I actually went on a site at great peril to my person. But prior to that, I'm going to show you a few pictures dealing with peril. That's me on top of uh, Diablo Mudo in Peru at 17,136 feet. Uh, the next picture, please. That's me again. I'm on the right, and I'm going here. I'm going somewhere here, Mr. Chairman. So, uh, uh, you're going to get there fast? I'm going to do it real quick. I'm going to get there quick. Okay, that's me on the right. Show for copy, 20,846 feet. Now, the next picture, that's usually how I, when I get up there, that's what I look like. That's what I look like. You say, well, that's not very hard. That's pretty easy to get up there and do that. The next picture can tell you a little bit what we do. And then climbing those, that's uh, uh, me. I'm taking a picture, but I, I climbed that. That's another mountain, uh, Chopi Calpi. Now, as I said, at great peril, 
I, I was just, I got on the road. And the next picture is the intersection, 164th in Pennsylvania. I stood on the road about uh, in the afternoon and I took a shot. The next shot is the traffic on the road going to the east. The next shot, traffic on the road going to the north. And the next shot, the road that does not go through to the west. Uh, there's, there's a, the river is pretty close there. And the next shot, we do have traffic. It is a John Deere tractor, and it's in the distance. There's not much down here. And I don't mind the $10,000 that it will cost to do a traffic study, but it's the waste of the $10,000 it'll cost to the traffic study. There's nothing there to study. We know that when we do develop it, when we do develop it, it will change a little bit, but there's just zero traffic in this area. So it's the, it's the waste of the money, and to, and to go to that point of why I don't mind doing, spending $10,000, I support an organization, and I know you guys are not going to make and ladies make the decision based upon what I will do with my money, but I support an organization of, Tim is, you know, my engineer obviously, and he thinks he's a, a charitable organization. Uh, but uh, uh, I'd rather spend the money somewhere else. And so people say, well, Mr. Odom, you don't want to spend the $10,000. Well, I will do so. The next slide is an organization that I support uh, in the indigenous areas of the world. It's uh, for, for uh, the Christian outreach, and it reaches the people for the next slide. And that's approving a gentleman that I took on Illimani. So it's not a money issue, it's the waste of a money issue. And that's why I'm open for comments. Well, we'll hear from the traffic staff next. Okay. Well, while we're waiting for them, let's talk about the 15 acres of commercial. That's really my concern. I'm less concerned about the traffic than complete free zoning of 15 acres of commercial, which doesn't seem to me to be what we want to do. Why would we want to do that? Well, Mr. Mr. Odom and I had a conversation the other day. We talked, and I told him that he could anticipate hearing about uh, traffic number one, and also the uh, PUD, PUD requirement for the commercial spot as the second principal issue. And he explained to me that he doesn't intend to develop this for quite some time in the future. And uh, I said that's all the more reason to do a PUD because he may not own that property 20 years from now when it gets developed. We may not be here, at least the nine of us, uh, 20 years from now when it's developed. And if we're going to zone it, it's certainly going to have to be with a PUD format at this point in time if you want to zone the commercial. And I think that that's probably a uniform position on the commission. Mr. Uh, Chairman, let me just interrupt you for a minute Go ahead. and make this example that we just heard on the previous case about great C3 zoning on that previous case has been out there and the applicant made the, the pitch, which is a legitimate pitch. We want this because it's heavy C3 right across the road. My question to the applicant on that case was, how long has that C3 been in place? Well, it's been in place for more than 30 years, okay? Paul, that's a perfect example of what, what the chairman's talking about. You're down the road somewhere. You may or not may not still be around when this land's developed. <laughs> uh, it's quite possible. You I hope you are. But you you never... I hope you are, too, but you may be off one of those mountains. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we don't know. Uh, I think the chairman is certainly right. Uh, I'll speak for myself anyway. I know I won't be here that long. Uh, and that 
that's the, the need and our compelling desire for, for the PUP. Uh, I just I just can't fathom taking a quarter section, and I know it's not all all developable because of the river and all that, and uh, and doing a trade zoning with 15 acres on a on a what will be someday a major corner. Mm -hmm. I, I think that that's a gift. I hope. No, I, I yeah, it's beyond hope. I, I firmly believe the way development patterns are going and what Norman's done and and all that. This is. It will be, um, and that's why, why I think we really need a PUP. Did the, may I ask a question? Sure. Did the ordinances no longer allow for straight zoning? No, I think they do, Paul. Oh, Everybody do. knows that. You oh, know. oh no, well, no, I'm not. I'm not certain. I, I didn't. You know, no, they. I, it's, it's clear that they do. I think, though, that as a plan, that and as a commission, that. While we don't disagree necessarily that straight zoning does have a place, that speculative development so far in the future, without some ability at some point to have another view of 164th in Pennsylvania, which will be a very major viable intersection in South Oklahoma City, is development without a plan. And so the plan calls for that sort of thought process with respect to this. And so I, I, I don't know if I personally can support straight 15 acres mm -hmm. C3 zoning just because of that. That's true. Just because, and, and again, due respect to the quality of the developments that you do, because I, 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 you've got a long history of quality development in the state, uh, in the city, and um, but I just can't support that without that kind of that view later on to, for us to get a look about what goes there. I understand. May I address that real quickly? Sure. The, um, the, the development company that owns this is LWT <coughs> MF. It, it stands for initials of two pieces of property that I developed 30 years ago. The first and today, and that, that was zoned uh, straight zoning. I've got lots of straight zoning property. I've never had a problem with any, any uh, partial uh, being developed with straight zoning and having a, a nice project. Uh, that was uh, those developments were 30 years ago. Today there are many, many millions of dollars of, of nice office buildings on those. That was zoned for R4, but uh, but it's now you know a, an office complex. I, I understand where you're coming from, and this August body's coming, a body's coming from. But I respectfully disagree that that um, uh, that I need to do a PUD. Uh, PUDs become difficult to interpret later. Uh, we have we've got some now that we are going through and we have to change and then what and the staff is dealing with this all the time JJ's department and what did it really mean you know is is that what it meant what we planned on doing and we need to change some of the things and it becomes uh, a difficult situation so but I understand okay Stuart <laughs> Did, were you listening to the earlier yeah, part? Yeah, the other part of the discussions. So I'm hoping that you'd have a specific question for me. Well, the specific question is, uh, why do you want a traffic study? I mean, we saw the pictures. I mean, obviously, there's nothing there now, so there aren't going to be any cars there now. Uh, clearly, I mean, we could probably sit out in that corner for an hour and see a car maybe uh, coming from one of the three directions. Right. Uh, but you had a point about why a traffic study is appropriate. Well, now this commission's adopted a policy whereby with, with uh, various sizes of land developments that it wants to see a traffic impact analysis to show what, what's the, uh, what the changes to the condition are going to be on the public roadway system, whether it's on the roadways, you know, mainline roads themselves or at intersections. And mm -hmm. the only way to, in order to know what the changes are going to be is if you get, you know, especially a sizable development like this, if they will turn in, you know, their trip, trip generations and that sort of information so that we can see what the impact is going to be to our existing transportation infrastructure. And the, the addition on the east side of Pennsylvania <clears throat> Avenue had turned in an analysis of that nature and it, it had demonstrated that, like, 
in, in this particular case, since there's really not the southbound demand, that up at the intersection of Pennsylvania Avenue and Southwest 149th Street, they demonstrated that even with the size of the development on the east side of the road, the level of service at the, the intersection of South Pennsylvania and Southwest 149th Street would remain within the level of service parameters that this commission believes to be appropriate. And so the only thing that this applicant was asked to do was to take a known developments, you know, the trips from a known development on the east side, add theirs to it, and then provide, basically do the same assessment at that same intersection. Using their proposed development. Right. Yes. Including. Yeah. Including. Yeah, including. What Paul right. plans. Okay. Right. So that sounds but like. that's not been done. Not completely yet, no. Okay. And that sounds like, to me, considerably less than what I'd consider to be a full-blown traffic study. Well, you know, the, the notion of waivers is, is, I would tend to think, on a sizable development, in order to be able to tell, to speak knowledgeably and definitively about whether my, de you know, my development either will or will not have an impact, you have to go through a, at least a minimum level of analysis. And so the only way you can do that is you have to, you have to look at the size, the nature of the development, what kind of trips may be generated, and then it, it may not be a full a div, a, an analysis that goes to the point where you're designing a traffic signal, but you can at least do a level of service analysis, which says that if we contribute this many more trips into this intersection, it will still function w at this particular level of service. Okay, so if I understand correctly, Mr. Odom is saying I want to develop this land, but I want to develop it way out in the future. We're saying we have a policy that requires a traffic study. So if we do this traffic study today, and it's determined that, and I'm going to make this up as I go, that he traffic needs to be helped by signalization and a turn lane, as example, to keep the proposed level of service at the proper level today. And he says, okay, I agree to do all that at the time of development, which is 20 years down the road. That really doesn't help us, does it? Well, there's so much that can happen in the intervening 20 years. Exactly. That's my point. But wouldn't it make more sense for us, if it is a speculative long-term zoning, for us to perhaps require traffic study at the time of development before permits are issued or something like that? Uh, for 20 years down the road, I, I, well, I would say I would certainly say that's a reasonable approach. Of course, now thinking in slightly different terms, any study that that would be looked at today would consider the development that's on the east side of the road. So, if there was another development that came in, like right at the intersection of Penn and Southwest 149th Street, would it be required to count, to to um, figure in the trips from the the area that you're talking about right now, even though those trips may not exist for another two decades? And then that developer well, may be saddled with, you know, more significant intersection improvements that might be point. needed. And another... Well, that goes also back to the commercial. You, you have purely, you have, without some sort of PUD where we get to see this thing every now and then, you're not going to have any idea about the nature and level of the commercial. I, I get Paul's point, I get Stuart's point, I understand that, but how it does have impact on other development in the area. Mm -hmm. Because the rooftops, I mean, you have 40, 145 acres of residential. That's a lot of trips. Well, the north of you toward 149th Street is AA, and that'll develop too. Uh, I would expect it would develop as R1. I mean, it will be basically surrounded by that. So you're going to have, a, over that period of time, a lot of additional rooftops and a lot of additional daily trips. 
Mr. Chairman. And I get those, I get those parts, too. I mean, Nick's point about, well, maybe at the preliminary plat stage, before we plat it, we ought to see a traffic study. Mm -hmm. uh, but that would be 20 years from now. That makes sense. Uh, I, I don't see develop, I'm not in the now. development business, but I don't think 20 years, I think it's a, I think it's a much shorter time frame, personally, than, I, than 20 to 25 years. Paul knows his business a lot better than I do, but I'm just expressing my opinion. I do not think it's that long. Well, just from an opinion guest standpoint, if that corner 15 acres were developed commercially fairly soon, then I would expect the rest of it around that would probably accelerate, not just your parcel, but other Yep. Other things around. I, I mean, as the application is submitted, I, I, I've said I can't, I can't support it. I don't think it's in compliance with the plan. I don't think it's in compliance with the things that we want to see. If you want us to vote on it, I guess we could, Paul. It's up to you, or you could, could continue it and come back at it later. I, I just don't know what you want us to do. But if you have a view. It's up to you. Oh, yeah, I want to vote. Uh, okay. Mind. Yeah. All right. All right. That's fine. Anybody you got any other comments? Well, if whatever motion you make, express the basis for it, including. I will. It was, are we ready? Any other discussion, commissioners? Well, I'll just make one additional comment. I am. A, in favor of uh, of this request of, from a use standpoint. I, th I yeah. think it's a, a great use. I don't have problems with 15 acres of commercial. I, I have no problem with another 120 or whatever is usable for uh, a residential development. Uh, I believe we can somehow wire around the traffic study requirement. I am troubled and can't support the straight zoning part of it. Uh, in a PUD, I'd support this in a heartbeat. Uh, straight zoning, uh, I can't do 15 acre straight zoning. But that's just my position. Okay, I'll make a motion to deny in that the application's not in compliance with the comprehensive plan. It's not in compliance with our general policy with respect to commercial development and uh, Plan unit development. Uh, it doesn't meet the re requirements that we have for traffic impact analysis, and that uh, the precedential nature of the 15 acres of zoning that's proposed, I think, has a an unfortunate or negative impact on surrounding and future development in the area. So, based on those things, I'd make a motion to deny. Do we have a second? Second the motion. We have a motion and a second to deny item 25. Cast your votes. It is denied. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. Paul. Item 26, PC 10386, application by Anna Butler to rezone 7525 South Stiles Avenue from R1 Residential to I1 Light Industrial. Is the applicant here? Do we want to just move this along? It seems pretty, pretty straightforward. Whether she I mean, it'd be not. something we would approve. I don't see any problems with it. I'll move approval. Second. I have a motion and second to approve item 26. Cast your votes, and it's approved. Item 27, ABC 818, application by Sidecar Barley and Wine Bar for an ABC overlay located at 1100 North Broadway Avenue. Hi, my name is Aaron Howard. Uh, I'm applying for an ABC3 overlay for a future uh, bar in that area, the address located or the address uh, listed, uh, and I seek your approval. Okay, commissioners, no one has signed up. Second. With motion and second to approve item 27. Cast your votes, and it's approved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Item 28 was deferred. Item 29 is PUD 1556, 
Application by JKD Investments, LLC, to rezone 1400 East Memorial Road. Good afternoon, Commissioners. I'm Chris Anderson with SMC Consulting Engineers. also have Mr. Dirk O'Hara with uh, JDK Investments, the uh, applicant for this uh, project. Uh, this is approximately an eight-acre uh, site on the south side of Memorial, Memorial Road. It's a little bit east of Broadway Extension. Uh, it's on the has zoning on the, the south, which says R1. It's actually a cemetery. If you've been out there, you realize what that is. Uh, there's residential on the on the east side. There's a mix of multifamily residential and office and commercial across the street on Memorial Road. Uh, we've read the staff report. There are two TEs. We agree with the first one. Uh, we would actually like to strike the second one uh, that has to do with the landscaping and go back to the original uh, comment in our PUD statement. Uh, stating that this project would meet uh, Oklahoma City landscape requirements. And with that, I'm going to bring up Dirk O'Hara to uh, explain a little bit more about the project and also address that TE a little further. Uh, good afternoon. Dirk O'Hara with JKD Investments. Uh, we met with the city in January about this piece of property before we uh, tried to get it under contract. And I think we've incorporated all of what they ask us to do uh, in our PUD. We currently operate uh, three other buildings, one in Norman, uh, one at 63rd and Portland in Oklahoma City, and one in Bartlesville. They're all transitional care facilities where we do uh, physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy, uh, mainly for the elderly, but it can be anyone with a hip replacement to uh, having a stroke to any kind of care that's needed. Um, these are very nice properties. All of our guests have private rooms, private bath, private showers, and uh, we, we're proud of the product that we put out there. Um, as with TU number two, uh, we do ask that it go back to the original five-foot uh, boundary, uh, and I can take any questions that you have. Well, I don't have any questions yet, but we have two people who have signed up to speak, and it, it, Donna and Paul Neal. And since you signed up separately, but your addresses are the same, I assume you'll come up together. Yes. yes. My name is Donna Neal, and I live in the house on the southeast corner, just actually not the most south one, but the one up. And we back up to this property in question. And I'm new to this process, so I apologize if I'm kind That's of perfectly okay. ignorant. Relax. Um, so we're not, we were not aware of any proposed changes or any development plans in the area, so we're kind of here to find out information and express our concerns about the property. Our house sits uh, downhill from the site, and uh, our backyard is actually multi-tiered, and so our fence is higher than the ground level where our house sits. And so the, the lot behind slope, doesn't slope a lot, but it is higher than our house. And so any development there could impact drainage. Uh, signage and lighting could create light problems for our backyard and our, our house. And so. We're interested to find out what the plan looks like, uh, what's, how many stories the uh, facilities will contain. We don't have any information, and so it may be that we should have asked for more information before today's meeting, so I'm sorry about that. That's okay. But, um, and so those are some of my questions. Uh, security is an issue as well. We can see the back of our property from Memorial Road and see if there's any activity going on in that lot today. If it's, you know, closed off by buildings, you know, no, there's, you know, we have different security concerns when there's commercially developed property there where people could get back there and do things that they can't do because they're visible now. Just those kind of questions. Well, um, were you able to listen at all to uh, what the gentleman said about this being a rehabilitation facility for people who um, yes, I did read that, in the, and I also heard him say that. And it, it, the, the PUD actually called for uh, a medical office and a rehab center and a nursing center. So I'd, I'd like to know the position of the buildings. You know, what's going to be most adjacent to my property? Will it be driveways and parking lot? Or will it be the well, back side of the building with residential windows? I, I'm, I just would like to have more information. That, that's what the uh, developer will have to tell you because well, we can't. And, Mr. Chairman, from the diagram we see, from what you said where your house is, it would appear there's going to be an office building behind you. Okay? Okay. My question to you, folks, would be... Not, not, not an office building. That would be um, the 
facility right here. Her house is right here. Yeah. Are you up by Memorial? Or no, no, we're on the south end. You're down on the... the yes. At the, the second house from the yeah, from that oh, lowest okay. corner the of the yeah. property. At the half cul-de-sac on the south. Unstable space circle, yeah. yes, sir. There's an office building right behind you on this, this diagram. But my question to you, you folks, and there's another half a dozen people that live north of you. Mm -hmm. Have you had any contact with the developer? We have no. had no contact with the developer until we received the letter from the Planning and Zoning Commission informing us of this hearing. Right. No. Okay. Yeah, so, I have not been yeah. contacted. So there by hadn't been a, a meeting to discuss this no, and all that? No. no None sir. of our neighbors were aware of it bef uh, before this as well that we've talked to. Well. And and let me, let me make sure I, you understand that. We understand that is uh, a property available for development. We know there will be something in there. We just want to be informed and have input to make sure that it does not impede the sale of our property right. and, right. and disrupt our quiet. I mean, a, a nursing center concerns me a little bit with ambulances and, you know, that we've lived near places like that before and we know that they can be noisy when at 5 in the morning somebody doesn't wake up and here comes the ambulance. And well, this so isn't going to be an emergency room site, so they're not going to come with lights and Well, I know, but it's sirens. someone who's needing medical attention in their facility. So. Well, well, I really believe that will end up not being a concern of if this is the, uh, done and screened, but I, I do believe you need some communication. Yeah, there, there needs to be some communication. We've had no communication with the developer and, and neither have any of our neighbors. One of our biggest concerns is, are we going to walk out in our backyard and look up at a five-story building 25 or 30 feet off of our back fence? Well, let's, You've let's, got seven houses. Is there going to be, if it's a residential facility, is there a loading dock? Is there going to be 24-hour day truck traffic bringing in groceries, medical supplies, or whatever? These are concerns that we have. Mr. Neal, uh, let me suggest that the applicant take two weeks meet with the neighbors. Mr. Chairman, uh, wait just a second. Mr. O'Hara, would you speak to uh, who you all met with and the president of the Neighborhood Association and his uh, input with everyone on that street because the Neals obviously were not a part of that communication. And so I'm interested to hear who the president of the association met with uh, and um, you can help us out on that. Yeah, thank you, Commissioner Cooper. One, I want to apologize that you okay, didn't uh, have any to us. Uh, sorry, I'm just apologizing to them really I quick. Um, my partner who's here, Kit Wakeley, sent an email to Ed Roberts, who's the president of the HOA. Uh, Mr. Roberts called him back and said he had no problem with this project and supported it. So that was exactly. the communication we had from the HOA. Okay. That's um, not much help. Well, l let me... Let me give you a, a suggestion here. My suggestion would, one, be get with the people, show them your plans, tell them precisely what you're going to do so they understand. Then they are in a position they can come back here and either protest and say why they don't like it or they can agree with it. Two, a facility like yours, and we have many, up against the residential needs to be buffered. It needs to be buffered by more than a five-foot landscape. I would tell you it needs to be buffered by something solid, not a wooden stockade fence, but maybe one of those drop-in concrete slab wall type things, something like that, to, to give them some, some buffering and protection. Maybe you have that in there, maybe you don't. From our staff report, we, we certainly can't tell. Uh, but there's, obviously, you don't need to speak with Mr. Roberts. I suggest you. But maybe he'll be able to supply you with a list. How are we to know as the developers that Mr. Roberts isn't speaking for the homeowners? Mr. Roberts, he's my neighbor. He well, 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 now, well, Mr. Neal, we're really almost going to, no, there's only a half a dozen people there, so I would encourage you to get with them all and have one one good meeting. I, I would suggest that perhaps Mr. Roberts can supply you with a list of homeowners in the association, um, and as well as those within 300 feet. 
so that you can have a, a community meeting people who live and there. And particularly the Neils and the people on their cul-de-sac who back up directly to your site. And, and it's not necessarily that we're against the project. Uh, but we understand. We'd like we, to know what's going on. We'd like to just have you all discuss this over the next couple of weeks and come back maybe on the 25th of September. And, and also address uh, the buffer. Uh, if, in fact, their property is dropping off, then we may not be able to approve anything less than that 15 feet because the runoff would run directly off of their property. And so uh, that also needs to be addressed and worked out as well. And on the east side, we'd be fine. It was all the way around on the south and the west where there's already a creek uh, and trees there. Uh, is where the 15 feet would really be. Right. Honest. The cemetery uh, may not be a problem. Yeah, I was about to say, I'll take <laughs> the cemetery. <laughs> but, no, yeah, right. so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, those residents might not complain. But uh, certainly the neighborhood uh, here where this cul de sac is. We need as short as possible. We're under a tight contract from the cemetery people. So that's, uh, but we will get with the homeowners and address the motions. So. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to continue item 29 to September 25th. Cast your votes. And it's approved. Item 30, PC 10390, application by Chisholm Crossing LLC, three zone 701 North Kilpatrick Turnpike to the R1 single family district. Mr. Chairman, members, Commission Brian Coon, uh, Hewitt Zollers represent the applicant. Um, this property is currently zoned I-2, I-3, uh, R-2, and PUD. Um, it was kind of a leftover piece that someone thought at one time was going to be an industrial strip along the turnpike, and that's obviously not worked out that way. Um, so we're just asking for straight R-1, a little bit different than this case you saw earlier, is we do have a plan because the next item is primary plat, and I will announce publicly there are no TEs, so I don't get to say that very often. So staff recommended approval. We'd, I'll be glad to answer your questions. No one signed up. I move approval. We have a motion and a second to approve item 30. Cast your votes. And it's approved. Suggest that we maybe defer this for two weeks so the staff can come up with some TEs. We've already, it's already passed. Isn't that something? Yeah, now you've got TEs. I know. <laughs> item 31 is C6649, the preliminary plat of Chisholm Crossing 2, located east of Mustang Road and north of 10th Street. Again, for the record, Brian Coon, if you have always referenced that, to get our 70 E's, we agree with all of them. I'll move approval. And you will comply with TE4 with the final plat presentation, right? Yes. Good. Yes. But I would suggest if we need to be turning those in early, we make that part of the application process. I don't know if that's one of the things on the application. So I don't know if it's on the application. Just a in, suggestion. It's in all the preliminary uh, plat as a and no. presentations as a T. Just a suggestion. Appreciate it. <laughs> All your suggestions. We have a motion and a second to approve item 31. Cast your votes. And they're approved. Thank you. Item 32, C6652, preliminary plan of Heritage Park at Surrey Hills. I agree. Located east of Mustang Road and south of Hefner Road. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Dwight Butler with Anchor Engineering on behalf of the applicant. I have reviewed and do agree with all the TEs and would happy to answer any of your questions. We do have someone signed up. Rebecca Knight. <clears throat> Give us your name and address, please. Yes, sir. My name is Rebecca Knight. I live at 11120 Coachman's Road, uh, Yukon, in okay. Surrey Hills. And um, you don't have, I guess you do have our map up there. It looks a little smaller. I reside right on the corner so that my house faces the uh, uh, proposed development. And I wanted to bring your attention to a couple of things. And, and all I have ever heard of this was this same letter as those other folks had, had uh, spoke up about not knowing this was coming until we got this letter. But um, <clears throat> my front door looks directly at it. If you look at the way that corner, uh, it's not a true intersection. If you look at Hastings Road, which travels uh, north and south through the neighborhood, it's a main corridor through the, those, uh, that entire section of Surrey Hills. 
and when and it jogs uh, so that in to continue on to Hastings Avenue and out to Surrey Hills which is the main boulevard which then leads you out to Northwest Expressway um, that's the only road that services that entire community uh, with the shortest uh, traveling distance you know out of the neighborhood to the Northwest Expressway uh, it's not a true intersection so my concerns are kind of three of them, safety, quality of life, and, and the financial issues that will impact myself and my neighbors. Uh, safety being number one, and looking at this intersection, I can tell you that the way that the, in the neighborhood that's being proposed, that road actually slopes downward. Once you would turn uh, into that neighborhood, it, it's level for a very short distance, and then it drops pretty good. So people, if that were developed, would be coming up a hill and, and unless something is done to protect the people who walk and ride bicycles. And uh, this is a very much of a boulevard. It's a quiet neighborhood. People get out with their babies in strollers. They ride bicycles. And they're, I, I watch the traffic. I watch the people. And it all flows right here. So I do have safety concerns if that were developed. You're looking at adding 36 families. If they all had two cars, you're looking at 72 more automobiles cramped into a relatively small area for that number of dwellings and not serviced by, by very much access or exit into and out of the neighborhood. And, and so I do have concerns about that congestion and, um, and, and what that means in terms of safety, in terms of the quali quality of life for the people who are sharing all that space, and in terms of how is that going to impact on my ability to sell this house. I've lived there since October of 1996, and you know, my I've just recently retired and thought about moving. And now, if I've got uh, 18 duplexes coming in, I'm very concerned about people coming into the neighborhood and saying, "Gosh, nice house, but I don't want to be on this corner." And you've now got, you know, 36 families moving in next door. So I'm concerned how that's going to impact on you know, the value of my property, my ability to sell the property, uh, given as, as many dwellings. Uh, I, I've expected, like most of my neighbors, that at some point the, the golf course folks might, or whoever owns that, might want to build something on it. But I, I really am concerned that this is a, a lot of families to put into a, a very small area. Don't know what they would sell for, as I say, and how that would impact on well, on the, the value of my home. The, the, pro the problem, or I should say the fact is that it's currently zoned R4, which means it's zoned for apartments. Oh, really? So the density could be... That would be horrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you're getting, in effect, you're getting a break because uh, the developer is coming in and, and putting duplexes on this site mm -hmm. uh, where they could put, yeah, say, I, garden apartments. Or, and they've got the right to do it. It's already zoned. I mean, we couldn't, we couldn't tell them no if they came I in see. with an apartment I see. application. So there's not, I guess I'm not quite understanding what it is that he, he's applying for then. It's just a preliminary plat to lay out uh, the site and propose that it would be duplex. I guess the other question then that, and maybe you would be interested in asking as well in that regard is, um, would this development also, would these, would these people be required to join the uh, Homeowners Association we, or not? We have, we have no idea and also no control over that. I see. That's a private matter. Well, okay, I, I because, can tell you how to get that answer. Uh -huh. Yeah. You, when this was, this was zoned, first of all, a long time ago once. I see this way when Surrey Hills was on. But there, Surrey Hills and this area will have some private covenants, and I'm yes, sure those do. covenants probably address which parcels are subject to be part of the Homeowners Association, which I are see. not. Okay, so well, check I'll, your covenants. And I'll, I'll, yeah. That would include yours. Yeah, yes. And I'll, I'll, I'll dig into that a little bit because it, I know that the Homeowners Association and the covenants or whatever I, that I read when I moved in uh, limited, you know, how many cars are parked in the street and that sort of thing. And right. and when I look at this, I'm I'm kind of shocked that they're trying to cram that many people in there. It's clearly a matter of making money, and I'd be happy to sell these people my house <laughs> so I can move and someone else can have the nightmare of living on that corner. Yeah, well, Thank you for listening. Thank you. Rod Palmer.
Uh, give us your name and address, please. I'm sorry. I'm Rod Palmer. I live at uh, the intersection of 114th and Hastings, which is 11112 Northwest 114th. Um, I guess my uh, first question is, since this is going to be uh, apartments, uh, duplexes. I mean duplexes as opposed to apartments, um, why is the zoning not changing to zoning for duplexes as opposed to apartments? Uh, why are we just having a preliminary plat as opposed to a zoning change? Is that something that, it, that normally takes place to, to actually have a use that is uh, below what it's zoned for, or does it require a rezoning in order to use the lesser use? Dan? It doesn't require a rezoning. It's, it's an allowed use in R4. When it's platted as, as this, as duplexes, it, that will be what controls the, the development of the property, will be duplex development. You can, you can limit that in a plat as well as a zoning case. Okay. Well, <clears throat> and I agree that I think that the people out there are getting a break from being uh, for the use that's that's planned here. Uh, the only other concern that I had was that very few people, I think, got notice of it. Uh, I wasn't contacted as, as the, uh, my neighbor indicated. She wasn't contacted. We're the people that are most affected by it. Uh, years ago, uh, Phillips Petroleum wanted to put an oil well in this same area where this is going, and, and there were enough people out in Surrey Hills that um, there were something like 500 people that came to the Board of Adjustment or signed a petition uh, for representatives of the Board of Adjustment concerned about it. But I think it is a, a more favorable use uh, for the people in the addition than that which it could be. Um, and so I don't have any objection to it, but I, I, I think it's noteworthy that there hasn't been contact with the residents there, apparently. Thank you. I'm I'm, 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 come, come up to the microphone and pull it down so we can hear you. Give us your name and address, please. I'm Betty J. Vine, and I live on 113th, and uh, <clears throat> there's a wall beside my house that uh, starts out at three feet and goes up to eight feet, and there's a slough where the water comes down, and 113th runs down the hill, and that development will be right behind my house uh, I, I, and then the golf course. But uh, the water right now is pretty bad when it rains, like two inches. It floods at, uh, our garages because it runs downhill. What are they going to do about that when they, uh, are they going to build a bridge and do something with that uh, is that, is that what I'm seeing? We don't know in terms of... That, that's a creek bed. That's why that big wall is by, uh, beside my house. And uh, I'm, I'm concerned about is that it, what they're going to do about that. Our drainage ordinance requires that they design the site in a way that it does not cause an increase in flow from what it does in its natural state. And so, I mean, that's, they may have to do some uh, remediation steps in order to prevent any increase in water coming onto your property. And the only time I heard about this is when it came in the mail. And I don't like that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes. And um, looking at this, um, proposal, it looks like to me that the development um, on the north side of Coachman's Road is sort of landlocking a piece of the R4. So I was going to ask why Butler about that. Um, what, how, how will access be taken to the remainder? That what will happen to that? Well, that's actually the landing zone for the driving range. You, you don't want to put homes there. So even though it's zoned R4, 
It's actually part of the driving lane? Well, it's where the balls land, yes. That's, that's why we stopped it. The north line is where it is. We measured up. The, the uh, driving range is just slightly off screen right now to the northwest. That you can see the little box behind the clubhouse. That's oh, I get you. Yeah, yep. Yeah. At the request of the client, we stopped it at that range as <clears throat> not to make a target zone. As far as the drainage, yeah, yeah. this site does drain to the west and then to the north, away from the rest of the additions. Okay. And we will be extending Coachman Road, putting the reinforced concrete box so that give more access. So I guess the question still remains in my mind. Are we determining that that property will never be developed by landlocking it in this way? or the, the, like current, the current developer has no desire to develop that property. It could be like Westbury. We never know. Yeah. Yeah. If the driving range goes, goes away, away, the country club goes away, it would be hard for us to predict that right, right. now. I think that it's probably... Given the, given the nature of the lot and what you have and the fact that this is zoned for R4, um, taking comfort with what Dan said about the development coming, the, use, the R2 coming with, re, with respect to the duplex zoning, um, I think it's probably pretty good use, frankly. I'll move approval. You agree with what the used one? Yes, sir. Certainly do. Okay. Second. Got a motion and a second to approve item 32. Cast your votes. And it's approved. Thank you very much. Mike, I'm going to have to leave. Uh, commissioners, be before I leave, you're going to be getting a uh, briefing book at the end of the meeting today. It's a briefing book on plan OKC. Uh, a number of you have not been involved in the steering committee process. This will kind of bring you up to date. Uh, I've asked Aubrey to meet with uh, individual planning commissioners and brief them over the next week or two, uh, partly in preparation for the uh, Planning Commission Council workshop, which is scheduled for the 14th of August. October, I mean. I'm sorry, I don't mean August. I'd like to go back to August, but I can't. Um, so you'll be getting that uh, today, and I would encourage you to go through it, uh, study it carefully. We certainly want to be well prepared when we meet with the city council people on the 14th of October. Thank you, Mike. Okay, next item is number 33, C6651, final plan of Sycamore Gardens 3, located east of Czech Hall and north of Southwest 15th Street. Good afternoon again, Commissioners. Chris Anderson with SMC Consulting Engineers representing the developer. We read the staff report and agree with the TEs except for number three. I think we need to make a modification. Uh, it has to do with an existing sanitary sewer easement, uh, which is on an existing sewer. And I think it needs to uh, be added at the end of it where it says uh, closed and vacated prior to final plat consideration by the city council. And the reason for that, uh, there again, this easement is on an existing sanitary sewer. Uh, the city's not going to let us vacate an easement on a, on a live sewer, uh, and we're not going to build a new sewer without uh, a plat in place. So that's the need for that request. Okay. There's an existing sanitary sewer uh, running from the subdivision to the north of us that uh, goes to the sewer main down along the creek. And with our new plat, we are realigning that sewer. And, and the request here was to have us vacate the easement before you consider the plat. But I can't vacate an easement on a live sewer line. The, the city won't let me do that. And obviously, the developer is not going to make a commitment to completely rebuild a sewer line until he has a, a plat in place to authorize that. So, so I think your proposed suggestion amendment to TE2 is Change closed and vacated prior to final plat acceptance by city council by deleting consideration, adding acceptance in its yes, sir. part by city council, right? Yes, sir. Okay, it doesn't change the requirement 
regarding vacating it. Correct. It just changes the timing. Time. Yeah. Commissioners, nobody signed up. Any additional questions for applicant? I'll move for approval. With the change With that to change that you just D three clarified. Right. Second. Okay, motion to and uh, to approve item thirty three as amended with T E two. Cast your votes. That's approved. Thank you. Yeah. Item thirty four was deferred. Item number thirty five is C sixty six fifty eight, final plan of Native Plains Section One, located east of Pennsylvania Avenue, north of Southwest one hundred and sixty fourth Street. Again, Chris Anderson with SMC representing the developer. Uh, we've read through the TEs, agree with them. They have been addressed. Uh, I do need to talk about TE number three, uh, which is requesting a variance uh, for a subdivision with more than 30 lots on a single entry. Uh, I've been in contact and communication with uh, Mr. Mike Wilson of the fire department over the last couple of days, and uh, we've come to a solution on that, and I'll pass this around. What we've agreed to do, and, and Mike has said that, that he could support, we will add a, an emergency uh, access off of the uh, south end of the project that will connect back to Pennsylvania Avenue, and that will, I think that will uh, delete that TE requirement. Excuse me, Chris. I think what we talked about, we decided that he still needed the variance for the lot length, right? I mean, isn't that, I think you still need the variance, but you're, for the for the block length, I didn't know that excuse was me. TE. Now that number of lots, number of lots. Excuse oh, me. Yeah. Excuse yeah. me. I think you still need the variance, but this helps your cause. Okay. For lack of a better way to put it. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, any other questions? Anybody else signed up? Nobody else has signed up. Excuse me. Move the variance TE three. Second. Motion is second to approve the variance to TE3. Cast your votes. That's approved. Move the application. And do we need to have that document submitted? Sure. As a part of the application? Yeah. Okay. Including that document. Second. Motion is second to approve item number 35. Cast your votes. Thanks, Chris. Thank you very much. All right. We're going to jump to number 42 real quick. It's PC10385, application by Trinity Tank Car to rezone 2120 Wood Westwood Boulevard from R1 to I2. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, my name is Dennis Fox. I'm here on behalf of the applicant. Uh, this is an application that takes a piece of property that my client purchased from the city of Oklahoma City. And as your staff report reflects, the last 30 years, uh, the city utilized it uh, as a maintenance facility before they moved over to uh, uh, the uh, western part of uh, Oklahoma City. They will continue the use that they have on the uh, property zoned I-3. We've asked for I-2 zoning. They uh, build tank cars, and uh, this property will just be part of the uh, continued operations. The uh, staff report is uh, supportive, and we'd ask for your support. My clients are here if you have any questions. Commissioners, nobody signed up. Don't see any TEs. Approval. Motion and a second to approve item number 42, cast your votes. That item is approved. Thanks, Thank you all very much. That takes us back to number 37, introduction of the proposed capital improvement plan for fiscal year 2015-2019. Okay, commissioners, I believe all we have to do with this is uh, set for adoption on September 25th, or unless there's any questions. Said. Motion is second to set item 37 for September 25th. Cast your votes. That will be set. Okay, that's all the matters for public hearing. It looks like, okay, the planning commission committees. Commission members? Uh, JJ, do we have a, a time set for the October 14th joint PC council meeting? Do we know that yet? I just hadn't seen anything. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, planning department. Oh, Sarah, you want to just, are you going to? Okay. Do you have a presentation or are you just handing them out? Okay. Uh, development services, municipal counselor, citizens to be heard. Any other business? Motion to adjourn. Cash your votes. It's approved.